When Rocky and I went to uh, Sydney, Australia recently, we uh, held a, uh, a little contest, actually, Rackspace uh, Australia held the contest with a bunch of startups, and they were pitching us and other celebrity judges, and we, are, uh, we, we flew the winner to San Francisco to talk to us today, and uh, it's all of mobile. It helps keep your uh, parents out of harm's way, and we're going to see it right now. The winner was uh, all of, by the way, um, before oh. I Who are you? Uh, hi, Robert. My name's Hugh Geiger, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Olo Mobile. Um, we got into this business about two years ago when my great aunt experienced a fall. She fractured a hip in the shower and actually had to crawl through the house to, to get to a telephone. So that kind of got us interested and, uh, and paying attention to the space. Right? Yeah. Well, congrats on winning our uh, contest when we were down in Sydney, Australia. And, and thanks for coming all the way from uh, Australia to San Francisco, because I know it's a long flight. It is. It is. My arms are tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was awful. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's been great. And, and the, the competition itself did a lot to lift our profile and, and to draw attention to, uh, I guess, the technology in the space. And uh, it's, been, it's been a great experience. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, you might hold up what it is, right? Yeah, so this is just a, a prototype. You have a, yeah. a look at that one. So. But it's, you're doing hardware design, 3D printing, circuitry. Yeah, we're, we're kind of three startups in one. So we're, we're, we're dealing with a, with a, a cellular platform, so a hardware device. Um, we've, we're making a cloud platform, so we're doing uh, voice and, and data routing in a, within a cloud environment, and we're making a companion app, which is how the family is going to interact with this device. So we, we don't want them to have to do anything unfamiliar, so they're just going to play with their, their smartphone and say, this is how I'm going to look after my parent, this is how I'm going to monitor their health, uh, and it's all done just through a simple smartphone interface. So what does it do? Yeah, so we're, we're reimagining uh, what you have here, like Life Alert, you'd be familiar with, you know, I've fallen and I can't get up, that, yep. that's a very old brand that's been around for a while doing the same thing. So that, that pendant format, it's a single button, it's very easy to use, it's very low maintenance for the, for the end user, no training. So what we've done is we've said, well, what can we put into a single button packet that um, is going to add value to that person's life? So our system is, is voice control, so she'll press a button and say, call Robert, call my son, or I need help. So she'll actually use normal semantic speech to, to request something. Um, that goes to our cloud platform, and then we route that to uh, whoever the family thinks we should do. So, it's a more controlled telephony experience. Um, we're trying to get rid of the call center from, from that, that, that call support equation to make it a more personal experience. But at the same time, we understand that if your loved one has a fall, you want to make sure that it doesn't matter whether it's 3 a.m. or 12 p.m. in the afternoon, that if they call, they get connected to somebody. So if you're not there, our system makes sure it goes through to somebody. Um, now, at the same time as that, we have some other issues that we wanted to deal with. So if you fall, you may not be able to articulate your location. You often strike your head or you know, become disoriented. Um, so we do indoor geolocation with Wi-Fi, and we're looking at doing it with Bluetooth as well. Um, and that allows us to say, when a call comes through, if you receive a call from us, you'll see on the phone where the person is and be able to say, oh, hi, mom, I can see you're you know, in the back corner of the garden. Are you OK? Um, so you'll be able to articulate exactly where they are, and they'll, even if they can't. Um, and at the same time, we said, well, what else do we need to do to make this platform make sense for, the, for, our, for, our, uh, for our family? Um, so we put a, a multi-axis accelerometer and a, and a few other little things in there that are going to allow us to, to detect falls. So um, falling is a, something that even Philips is having difficulty with. It's a very big, very challenging problem because, you know, if you're six foot and, and, and weigh, you know, 120 kilos, pounds, yeah. uh, or if you're heavy, uh, you're going to fall differently to someone who's maybe 85 and, and, and weighs, you know, only a few pounds, right? So the mechanics of how you fall are different. So having a, a common algorithm that says this is what a fall looks like it doesn't work, it works terribly. It's either too sensitive or it's not sensitive enough. Yeah. So our system actually asks that person, are you okay? So it, it, it sends a, a, a description of the fall to our platform. We look at that and then we ping back to the device and the device says, are you okay? And the person will tell us whether or not they're okay. If we don't understand their response, we, we create an alert. Uh, if we do understand their response and they say they're fine, then we say, okay, well, that wasn't a dangerous fall and we, and we, we record that. And obviously yeah. if you drop it, right, you don't want the sensors to send yeah, back. Yeah, that's saying right, yeah. The person fell, so you actually have to know that you're on a person and that you, you're falling in a certain yep, way, right? Exactly right. So that's that's all part of, I guess, the challenge. And we're just talking. We're actually talking to a couple of universities back home. We've got some uh, pretty exciting researchers that we're hopefully going to be able to announce soon. Um, that are going to be joining us to help us uh, to, to nut out that problem because it is it's a major problem. It's it's the second 
uh, cause of death in seniors. So um, you, everyone worries about their older parents driving around in cars. That's not a problem. You know, just getting up and going to the bathroom, that's, that's more dangerous. So uh, falls are a major issue. Um, I think in terms of healthcare costs, they're number six in the US for, for total cost of the healthcare system. And a big part of that is just monitoring and, and being there to render assistance quickly because uh, older people uh, can become very unwell very quickly if they're, you know, if they're injured. So, yeah. um, so that's, that's part of what we do is falls. And, and a lot of people, a lot of older people don't have a lot of friends to check on them or, you know, family yeah. members might see them once a week, you know, not, not see yeah. them on a regular basis. Yeah. So if they've fallen, it, you know, they might be lying around for a little while. Exactly right. I mean, if someone like that's yourself not, stops responding to thought, email for 24 hours, like if you, if you don't respond to email for 24 hours, someone's going to notice, right? Whereas... Uh, you, you know, you might go a couple of days if you're if you're an older person living by yourself, and you know that's normal. Um, but uh, you know, they need assistance to, to be rendered more quickly than that. So um, that's what we're doing in the fall space. Um, how much? How much do you think this is going to sell for? And um, initially, or? so we've actually got a, an Indiegogo campaign up right now. Um, so for early adopters, we're we're looking to sell it for uh, $149 with, with the, the first uh, three months um, included in that. Um, commercially, it'll be around uh, around $149 and then about 30 bucks a month for, for the ongoing coverage because it is a cellular device. We do have to hang it on a network and so we are working with carriers to, to have that, that, that network access. Um, but look, the really interesting thing that we're excited about is we this accelerometer that we've got on there, um, we're, we're looking to, to constantly monitor that person's level of activity. So we're going to map their activity throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout the years. Um, and look at how often they're inside, how often they're outside, how physically active they are at given times of the day. Um, and we're going to map that against uh, things like medication uh, and, and uh, care. So if you go to a different doctor, what was the impact on, on your mother's level of wellness when she, when she changed the care provider? Or what was the impact when she changed blood pressure medication? You know, yeah. She might just feel a general level of you know, less well and that might actually translate into less physical activity. And that can be a leading indicator of you know, her health declining. And as a family, it may not be obvious until it's too late. So we want to try and bring that data out, uh, you know, sort of quantified self type stuff, um, and, and put it in a way that's um, accessible to, to, to the family. So yeah. How do you get your parents to wear one of these? Is it? Uh, you yeah. call them on it. Uh, that's, you know, this is what we're, gonna, this is what we're telling people is, you know, they, they know, uh, particularly if you're over 75, it's, it's like wearing a seatbelt, right? We don't love wearing seatbelts, but it's usually a good idea to wear, wear one. Um, particularly if you're over 75, um, they, they need to be wearing it, um, and the GP is going to be telling them that they should be wearing it. The, the, the lo local law enforcement are going to tell them it's a good idea. Um, and so what we want to do is make it more about family communication. At the moment, the existing industry solution is put this on, and if you get into trouble, a stranger is going to call your house and maybe send an ambulance. Whereas what we're saying is put this on, keep it with you. Um, you, can, you can monitor your own health this way. Your family can be more involved. And when they need to talk to you, they can just call you, and you just press it, and you answer it. If you want to talk to them, you just press it and call Robert. So for them, it's a really simple cellular device that they don't have to think about. Um, and the added benefit is that you know, if they do experience a fall or something like that, it's, it's there to assist them. Yeah. So um, our, I guess our value proposition is that it's, it's a communication tool first, and you know, emergency assistance is, is a secondary benefit. How, how's the Indiegogo campaign going? Pretty well, pretty well. So um, we, we had a bit of a hiccup at the start. I'm not going to go into the details, but uh, a certain payment provider um, prevented us from receiving payments, which is a great way to start. Um, but uh, uh, that's been sorted out now, and, and so we're now kicking along. Um, we've, uh, we've had, I think, about 70 backers so far, um, and we haven't had any uh, major press coverage yet, so this is just through our friends and social network. Um, so we're really looking to kick it out over the next week um, and, and get a, a more broad audience in there. Uh, um, the PR stuff, uh, the, the, the indie campaign for us is really about um, the PR. We want to we share what we're doing and get more people involved and get more people interested. Um, one of the great things so far is that we are meeting more researchers, we're meeting hospitals, um, lots of other people that haven't heard of us before are starting to hear about us and, and we're having more conversations, which you know, as a startup, that's a, a, a big part of, of, of getting it going. You know, building hardware like this it takes some investment. How did you raise the initial yeah. investment and how much um, did you raise? Well, we're bootstrapping. So we, oh. we built a, a mobile phone off, uh, off, off uh, you know, the smell of an oily rag, shall we say. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's been tough. Um, but we basically what we've done each, at each gateway is, is validate our tech, validate our tech, validate our tech. And we've now basically gone as far as we can uh, on our budget. So the next bit is where the certification and, and the, I guess, the commercialization costs come in. 
uh, and that's where we need external investment to, to get over that. How much did you guys put in? Uh, uh, we're about 120k in, I would say, give or take. I mean, we don't pay ourselves, so you're looking at tens of thousands of man hours. Uh, that is free. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, we've got uh, very patient families and friends that uh, that assist us. So. Um, that's it's really brilliant. Who who designed the heart? How, tell me about the team that built this. Okay, so um, myself, I'm the I'm the talker and the business guy. Um, I'm also my background's in data analysis, so I've done all kinds of different analyst kind of stuff. I'm a bit of a numbers nerd. Um, my business partner Ken, uh, he's a software and robotics guy, so um, he's he's looking out for the firmware. Um, he's done a lot of the machine machine integration stuff. Uh, and our third business partner is a, an ex Motorola engineer, so he's been designing handsets from you know since he, since the nineties. That's that's kind of his thing. So um, between the three of us, we've kind of got our you know got our bases covered. Um, and the actual hardware platform is, um, according to our you know ex Motorola guy Seppo, um, is, is a relatively simple platform, and we've. Uh, we've done that on purpose because we don't, we're not really a core hardware play. You know, we're, we're all about collecting this healthcare data and, and delivering a, a soft service. So yeah. um, the platform's just sort of a, you know, a necessary uh, piece of the, the ecosystem. So uh, even a, a, a fairly simple platform has, uh, you know, a few dozen chips on it. You know, <laughs> yeah, it does. You look yeah. at that and uh, think, try making that in 1985. You know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, and that's that's one of the great things um, I've seen on your show a couple of times. You've had people come on and talk about. How much cheaper it is to, to make stuff, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm wearing a Fitbit at the moment, right? And these kinds of technologies uh, are being fueled by um, the explosion of mobile devices and, and big guys like uh, like Broadcom and others reducing the cost of, of these components. And um, one of the other things that we've seen as well is, uh, in terms of the components that you can just jump online and buy now, um, the breakout boards, the the soft soft integration of all these components, it all they all come with manuals. You know, if you if you've yeah. never done this stuff before and you've got a couple of weeks of spare time, you can. You can work out how to build your own phone. Uh, it's it's quite remarkable. Everything's standardised. There's there's common interfaces for everything. Um, it gets a bit more tricky to commercialise that, but if you're a tinkerer and you want to have a play, it's uh, it's, it's relatively easy to, to get started. So, yeah. um, this is probably made for the Australian market. Global. So oh. yeah, we we. Um, but you're going to have to get approved in each country, right? We yeah, have FCC yeah. here, and, and the EU has yep. a separate the CE a, a stamp and. Yeah, so the, the tricky part is that it is a cellular device, um, yeah. but we're, we're going for certification here first, um, because as far as the- uh, Here being United uh, States. In the United States, yeah. Uh, the, the certification is strictest here, so we get it here and we get recognition everywhere else. Um, there are some different things in the EU that are a little bit funny, but um, generally speaking, as far as the spectrum stuff, that's the tricky bit. Um, here's hard, get it here, and we get credit for that in other, other regions. So um, one, of the, one of the things that we're doing with the, um, the the GSM modem in there, so the the, the, the mobile modem, uh, is we are using a global a global one. We actually want to be able to deploy this in, in any country. Um, so we, we deploy a, a soft instance, and then we can um, push the devices out, um, and it'll work the same, you know, in Japan as it does in the US or in, in the UK. And then so you'll need to make a deal with the carriers, right? Or yeah. So we're talking to a couple of providers about it. Um, what we call what they call a global SIM card. So it's a SIM card that'll work in in just about any cellular market, or certainly all the major ones. Um, and so we're talking to a couple of different providers on that front at the moment. Um, and I guess our, our long-term vision for this stuff is that we'll have a common platform everywhere, and it doesn't matter whether you hop on a plane to Australia or you know if Grandma wants to go on a holiday to the UK, you know, knock yourself out, take your thing with you, and um, you know uh, you'll always be connected. So um, yeah. Great job. Yeah, thanks. It's very cool. Uh, where do we learn more about it? Uh, on our website, so www.ollomobile.net. Um, and of course, uh, check out uh, Indiegogo and search for Cloud Phone. That's what we're calling it here. Cloud? Here. Cloud Phone. Cloud Phone. Yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're actually calling the thing, um, is a cloud phone. So, yeah. Very cool. Thank you so right. much and good luck to you. Yeah, thanks very much, Robert. Thanks. Cheers.